Welcome. In this video, we're going to begin to discuss what happens when you combine capacitors in a circuit. Up to this point, we discussed capacitor. We considered one capacitor, uh, how it's designed, the dielectric, uh, the formula for capacitance, etc. Now we want to see what happens when you put a capacitor in a circuit, and in particular, you have multiple capacitors in the circuit. How do they behave? The first case we're going to look at is called parallel capacitors. What do we mean by the word parallel? Well, look at this picture here. We have three capacitors, C1, C2, C3. The left plate of each capacitor is connected with the same black wire conductor. The right plate of each capacitor connected by the same red wire conductor. When you have everything on one side connected by a conductor and everything on the other side connected by a conductor, then you have a parallel arrangement. So the three capacitors are in parallel. <clears throat> now, for illustration, I've drawn a little picture here, but I want to remind you in the future, we won't be drawing pictures, we'll use circuit symbols. So the actual circuit symbol for a capacitor looks like this. You have one wire come in, you have the two plates, one wire go out. That's the capacitor symbol. We'll work with that in the future. What about for the battery? What about that picture? Now, when I say battery, it could also be a, a DC power supply. Battery is a little quicker to say, but either a battery or DC power supply. Notice there's a low terminal labeled with a minus and a high terminal labeled with a positive. The actual symbol for this thing, you have a wire come in, the low terminal is a short bar, high terminal is a long bar. <coughs> that is sufficient to identify a battery, sufficient to identify the low side, the high side. Sometimes and often the high side will also be labeled with a positive, low side with a negative. So this um, additional information is just, it's redundant. Like if my handwriting is not very good, you may say, well, it helps to see both the symbol and the plus minus to tell the high and the low. So sometimes you'll see it with a plus and a minus, sometimes without. Let me also, well, so you notice it looks kind of similar to the capacitor. The capacitor of the two uh, plates there are equal in length. For the battery, you have a short one and a long one. The short one, the low side, long one, the high side. Now let's just consider an example. What if this was 12 volt battery? What does that mean about the plus and the minus? <clears throat> does it mean that this is plus six volts here? minus six volts there because the 12 volt is the delta V, the difference in voltage between the two terminals. Does it mean plus and minus? Or perhaps it means this is zero and this is plus 12. That would give a delta of 12. Okay. Or does it mean that the low side is 10 volts and the high side is 22 volts. You see, in every case, the difference from the low to the high would be 12, from minus six to plus six, zero to 12, from 10 to 22. What's the right answer? The answer is, we don't know. When you're told the voltage of a battery, you know nothing about the value of the high terminal and the low terminal. You only know what is the delta, the difference. 
So delta V, let's say the, the potential of the high terminal minus the potential of the low terminal. <coughs> you may use a positive and a negative. It doesn't mean one is positive and one's negative. It means one is higher, one is lower. You only know the difference. <coughs> okay. Let me clean this up. So what happens when we attach these capacitors to the battery? <coughs> well, we know if there is a difference in potential delta V, that that will lead to an electric field. If there's an electric field, you'll move charge in a conductor and it will approach equilibrium. Therefore, this thing will approach equilibrium by making the high sides or the right sides of the capacitors at the same potential as the high potential of the battery and the left sides of the capacitors the same potential as the low side of the battery. How does that happen? Well, charge is going to leave the battery. <clears throat> we'll deposit some charge Q1 on C1 just enough that that plate is at the same potential as a battery. Remember a positive charge will raise the potential. Now you may be thinking again, well I thought electrons move through the wire. That's true, electrons move through the wire, but we pretend that we can treat current flow, charge flow as positive. And you get the same result as I mentioned previously, you know, adding electrons makes it negative, removing electrons makes it positive. We need to make those plates positive. So C2 has a charge Q2 just enough to bring it to the potential of the high side of the battery. And C3 is going to have Q3. So the charge that left the battery was equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q. Oh, plus Q3. The total charge that left the battery <clears throat> was enough to raise the plates of those three capacitors so that everything on the right side is conductor. The terminal of the battery, the red wire, the three plates, the same potential. We'll call that that high potential V plus, whatever it is. What about the other side? Well, <clears throat> electrical forces are so enormous, you cannot have charge imbalance. Whatever charge left that battery had to return into the other side of the battery. <clears throat> the words you have to balance the charges everywhere. That first capacitor C1, in order for that thing to be stable, you're going to pull off minus Q1. It'll head back to the battery. The second one, minus Q2, head back to the battery. Third one, minus Q3, head back to the battery. So you have the total charge Q leaves one side, returns the other side, no difference in charge of the battery before and after. Every capacitor, we refer to the charge of capacitor, we mean the charge on the positive plate. The charge on C1, we call it Q1. But the total charge of the battery, uh, of the capacitor, nothing. You get a plus Q, minus Q, they cancel. But we refer to the charge of the capacitor as the positive plate. So everything is close to neutral. Of course, the capacitor is there's an insulator between the plus and the minus, but overall it's stable because they can, they're close enough to stabilize one another. The left side, if we call that potential B minus, then the left plate of C1, C2, C3, and the terminal battery 
or all that be minus. Therefore, if we say what is the difference in voltage of C1, it's going to be delta V, the same as a battery. What about C2? Delta V. C3, delta V, because the difference from one side of the capacitor to the other, for each one it's V plus, V minus, the same delta V. <coughs> Therefore, I can calculate what the charge on each capacitor is now. Let me clean up some things here, easier to write. <coughs> The charge on the first capacitor, Q1, will be equal to C1 times delta V. That's the, one of the basic equations of the capacitor. The charge is capacitance times delta V. What about the second one? Well, Q2 is C2 delta V. Same delta V. Q3. C3 delta V. So the total charge that left the battery, let's look at this. We have the same voltage each time. It's going to be C1 plus C2 plus C3 times <coughs> delta V. We're just adding those three terms, C delta V, C1 delta V plus C2 delta V plus C3. And we factor out the delta V. Delta V, it's the same for each one. That's the total charge that left that battery. Of course, the same amount returned to the other side of the battery. So the battery didn't gain or lose charge. It just pushed that much charge up one side and brought it the other side because everything goes to equilibrium. So that the same potential on the, for everything on the left, the same potential, or of course, a different one for everything on the right. Everything connected by a conductor, same potential. Now we play a game. What is the game? The game is if I wanted to make a circuit with only one capacitor, but that one capacitor, C was equivalent. It's the EQ. Equivalent or equal in function to those other three, what would that one capacitor be? Well, that's what the EQ stands, C equivalent. If that capacitor is truly equivalent, means for the same battery delta V, the same charge would go out and come back. So you wouldn't, if you had that battery, you wouldn't know whether you had the three in parallel or the CEQ, because <clears throat> from the perspective of the battery, you see just, oh, that much charge went out. So this Q must equal C EQ delta V. <clears throat> same delta V, same charge, but one capacitor. Now, since these are equivalent, <clears throat> this Q for the single capacitor is the same as the Q for the three parallel. I can equate these two equations. So this is equal to C EQ delta V. Now, since it's the same delta V, I can cancel that one out, cancel that one out. I'm left with C1 plus C2 plus C3 equals C EQ. So what I find is <clears throat> this relationship right here. This is the relationship for parallel <clears throat> capacitors. C1, C2, C3, you could have two, you could have three, you could have four, five, however many, <clears throat> you extend the same logic. All of those capacitors in parallel are equivalent to one capacitor that's the sum of them all. Okay, so that's the first part of this discussion. I'm going to end it there with the parallel capacitors. We'll come back to discuss the series capacitors.